air adventures of Biggles. The first dreadful day in the Gobi Desert is coming to a close. Bertie and Biggle settle down for the night in their grounded plane and wonder if it will ever be airborne again. While at Nanhu Oasis, 50 miles to the north, Ginger pays a last visit to the cave before turning in. He feels more relaxed when Father Dubron tells him that algae is progressing satisfactorily. But as he makes his way through the tunnel to the opening, he sees a torch flashing and hears Ritson anxiously calling for him. The Swedish missionary reports that Anne Traves has disappeared. But surely not. Where would she go? That is why I'm worried. I don't know. But she isn't at the guest house, and you say she isn't here in the caves. Well, perhaps she's wandering about the oasis. I went for a stroll myself before coming over here. But did you see her? Well, no, I didn't. Well, then I don't think she is here. I called for her, but there was no answer. I'm sure something unpleasant has happened to her. But what could happen? She wouldn't walk out into the desert, would she? Well, she's never done so before. Then I can't see why she should start tonight. She must be here somewhere. I've been wondering if our enemies have crept up to the oasis. Well, they've been darn quiet about it, if they have. Besides, Feng is on watch. He hasn't reported anything. Well, then where is she, Ginger? There's nothing else I can think of. She's somewhere within half a mile of the Salbed. And probably perfectly all right. I don't share your optimism. She has never wandered away before. Well, there's only one way to find out, Henrik. We'll make a thorough search for her. The oasis first. She's most likely out there. Anne? Anne, where are you? Anne, this is Henrik. Please answer. Anne, Miss Traves. If you're out here anywhere, call back to us. Oh, I don't think she is, Ginger. Did you look by the river? Yes, I shone my torch over every inch of the ground. It occurred to me that she might have fallen and injured herself. Yes, I thought of that too, but she's nowhere amongst those trees. Oh, well, go back to the guest house and check with Miss Summers, Honnick. She might have gone back there. And you? I'll try Father Dubron again. I'll meet you at the same place inside the caves. He hasn't seen her. He hasn't been back to the guest house either. No, not yet. Miss Summers is beside herself with worry. Oh, well, we'll search the caves then. And if she isn't in there, it means she's gone out into the desert, either willingly or she's been taken by force. Well, shall I go out and see if Feng knows anything? I think we'd better do the caves together. There are quite a number of them, aren't there? Oh, yes, more than I have seen. The cliff is honeycombed with them. I wonder if she's lost herself in here somewhere. Um, is that possible? Oh, it is possible, but unlikely, I think. We've always kept to those caves and passages that we know. If she tried to come through in the dark, it might be tricky. She would not. As you know, we have been using knots of wood as torches. It is our custom never to come in here unless we have a light. Uh, nevertheless, we'll, we'll have a darn good look for. Uh, you take the caves to the right of this point, and I'll search those to the left. If you find her, come back here and wait for me. Miss Traves! Miss Traves, are you in here anywhere? Anne! Miss Traves! Please, Anne, answer me. Anne, where are you? What has happened to you, Anne? This is Ginger Hebblethwaite. For Pete's sake, call out if you can hear me. Anne! Caesar's ghost. Anne, is that you? 
Fritzen. It's me, Hornrick. Where the place is I, Apparently not far from you. But what are you doing over here? I thought you were searching the other end. What do you mean? You're on my side. Oh, wait. I'm trying to come to you. Keep your torch shining ahead of you. Right. I, I think I've guessed what happened. We've wandered into the same tunnel from different ends. It must be that. I can see the wall before me curving to the left. Oh, I can see you now. It is the same tunnel. <laughs> Henrik, did you hear that? What do you mean? A groan. <laughs> so, somebody groaned. I, I'm sure I heard a groan just then. Anne, can you hear me? She's here. <laughs> but where the blade? Hold it, Honnick. Don't come any closer. Why not? Directly in front of you, there's a hole in the floor. Wait a minute. I'll come to you. Ginger, she's here. I flashed my torch through the hole. See her. By George's. So that's what happened. She must have fallen through this confounded hole. <laughs> it is all right, Anne. We are here. Shine your torch, Ginger, so that I can climb down. Uh, Righto. I'll follow you. Uh, 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 she's hurt. Her head. There's a great lump on it. Yeah, knocked her cold, apparently. She's on the verge of consciousness. It is Henrik, Anne. All is well now. We are with you. Quite a big cave down here. It's on a lower level than the others. Well, I do not care about that. Anne. I, I was thinking what a wonderful hideout it would make. That hole in the tunnel floor seems to be the only entrance. That's a... Oh, Henrik. Oh, my head. I know. You fell and hit it on the rock. Where... Where am I? You tumbled through a hole in the tunnel floor, into a cave on a lower level. Yes. Yes, I remember now. In the darkness, I took the wrong tunnel. I was trying to find my way back when I fell, and then I blacked out. Why did you not bring a light? We used all the lumps of wood, and I didn't have a proper torch. Oh, you should have asked me. You know I have one of Ginger's. Oh, I thought I knew the way. I was coming down to see if Father Gibran needed me. I'm terribly sorry to have been such a nuisance. Uh, don't worry about it, Anne. This may have been a lucky mishap. Well, how do you mean? Well, if you hadn't lost yourself, we mightn't have known about this cave. It'll be a wonderful hideout if we ever need it. We could dive down here, pull a rock over the opening, and no one would ever find us. Oh, I hope we never need to do that. Well, so do I, but it'll be another week before Biggles comes for us, and I'd like to be sure we'll... We'll be waiting for him. How are you feeling now, Anne? Oh, my head's aching dreadfully, but I'm much clearer now, thank you. Then let's help you out of here. If we're to work on the strip first thing, we'll need some sleep. old bean it's just too very hot to stay up here on top of the kite we must mend this pressure pump bertie it's still quite early you know yes well it isn't the hour that concerns us old trout it's the blooming heat we lissies are quite prepared to work 25 hours a day but not at a temperature of 120 belly degrees but it'll grow hotter as the day wears on we won't be able to do any more work until night time oh, so belly what even if we do mend the pressure pump we can't fly the old crate frying up here won't provide a new windscreen old bean no, I suppose not. It's just that I hate the thought of lying about all day doing nothing. Righto, hop down if you want to. We'll spend the hot part of the day in the plane. You asleep, Bertie? No fear, too belly hot. We were closing our eyes to induce some wishful thinking. About the windscreen, I hope. No, about a piece of ice trickling down my back. Anything to keep my mind off this blooming oven. What are we going to do about that perspex, Bertie? Oh, I'm hanged if I know, old sausage. We could try to fly without it, I suppose. We couldn't stay in an open cockpit for 1,500 miles. We have to cross the Himalayas, don't forget. Oh, wonderful thought. It'd be freezing. I'd rather put up with this discomfort, thanks. I can't think of a darn thing in the plane we could rig up in place of the perspex. No, there isn't anything. 
nor can we trundle down the street to buy a new sheet. Baked potatoes, why didn't we pick a more populated place to come down? Yes, right beside an aerodrome. <laughs> an Sister. aerodrome? Th th there's that commo aerodrome out in the desert. I know, I'd forgotten all about it. We'll find Perspex there, Biggles. Even if we had to pinch it from a valley kite. It's a long way off, of course. Fifteen or twenty miles, that's all we can make it. Tonight, Bertie. We'll try to grab some sleep now, and tonight we'll trek over to that drome. Can you see it anywhere? Oh, not a sign of it. I was sure we'd be close to it by dawn. Well, it's dawn now, old Bean, and within a few hours it'll be blooming hot. I'm beginning to wonder if this trek was a good idea. I'm sure we followed the right compass course for the drome. Well, we waffled about a bit after we saw it, you know, old Bean. But it was in perfectly flat country. We'd spot it from miles off. Then we must be many blooming miles off because I can't see it. I say there's a kite over there. Right, Jingo, yes. Flying low too, Bertie. Bertie, that machine's heading for the strip a bit to the south, eh? Come on, old Bean. Change direction left, left, wheel. Wait, Bertie, stop walking. Why, well, don't, don't want to waste time, you know. That kite has turned. It's coming this way. Well, now, why the blazes should it do that? I mean to say, if the drone's down in that direction, why should the blighter fly in this? Only one reason I can think of. He's seen us, and he's coming over to investigate. <laughs> It is not difficult to see two moving forms against the wide expanse of desert. Will this enemy pilot harm Biggles and Bertie? Even if he doesn't, what will happen when he reports their presence? Don't miss the next absorbing episode of the air adventures of Biggles! <laughs>